All right, before I start this video, I'd like to once again remind everybody that I now have a Twitter. The username is at Jerry Athlete, and by following it, it allows you to be the first to see what I'm up to whenever I'm not making videos. And if you wanted to contact me for any reason, you can do so through that as well. Once again, it's at Jerry Athlete, and I would like it if everyone checked it out. So enough of that, let's roll the intro and I hope you all enjoyed this video. And also regarding this particular video, uh, I decided to split it up into two separate parts, the first part being 10 minutes long, the second, second part being a little bit more than 22, 23 minutes long. Um, the first 10 minutes isn't really necessary if you know how to use uh, Make Human and if you've put models into Unity, but the second part kind of shows you how to optimize it and make it better for use with VR chat in particular. So with that being said, let's begin with part one of two. Hello everybody, and do I have a question for you today. Are you tired of walking around as a waifu or a 9 inch tall echidna in VR chat? Would you like to be something a lot cooler than your favorite Pokemon, cartoon character, or once again waifu? Well here I have the solution. Let's go ahead and make a 3D model of yourself, texture it, and upload it to the VRChat servers using their SDK to where you can play as yourself in VRChat. What could be better than that? Now, today, of course, this is leading up to what this tutorial will be about. Creating a 3D model of yourself, a quick way to get it textured, and get it uploaded to the VRChat servers, along with a few optimizations that you'll need in order to do so. Now you're going to need some, of course, prerequisites. All the uh, downloads will be in the description listed. Uh, but firstly, you'll need the Make Human. The, um, let's see, I have 1.1.1 here, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't matter what version you have. So you're going to need Make Human. You're going to need, let's open up Chrome here. Uh, use this Unity rig for Make Human. Uh, that is to make the rig, the skeleton, which you'll see right here, Pose Animate this right here let's go ahead and make this a little smaller shall we all right let's go ahead and pre-rig your model in a format that I like using for unity it's pretty good um, it got me pretty good with the model compared to some of the default skeletons um, but from here once you get this the description basically tells you put it in your make human folder and data and then there's gonna be rigs and you're gonna need both that Unity MH SKEL and your default weights MHW in there. That'll make sure that there's no problems whenever you upload your or import your file after exporting it from Make Human into Unity. Now, uh, uh, coming to Unity, you're going to need version 5.6.3 P1. That will be again a link of. Um, this is the version recommended by VRChat for using the SDK, which is another thing that you'll need. Do not, I would recommend only using 5.6.3 P1 because that is the version, of course, they recommend. And if you use a newer or older version, you may have compatibility issues with, issues with either the SDK or importing the model into VRChat. Now, another thing that I'd recommend is using the Mantis LOD mesh editor. This will decrease the polygon count of your imported model to something a lot lower, you know, something that VRChat can tolerate because VRChat has a maximum polygon count of 20,000 of any imported character. Now, whenever you optimize it as much as you can, I got to about 13,000 polygons, but then I added teeth and it just skyrocketed. If it's above 20, it won't let you use it. If it's above 10,000 and less than 20,000 it'll throw out a warning but um, I like to stick below 10,000 that way it gives you a smiley face with it not really but you know what the program trying to but this will easily decrease the polygon count um, again while we're creating the model we're gonna go ahead and make the poly count as low as we can just so we don't have to do a lot of simplification uh, now Another thing too is rendering uh, the textures. Now, this is not, I don't know how you know can get from that to that without a little bit of texture editing. Now, if you go ahead and look here, on the right is the default texture that exports with the model. 
whenever you export it in a little bit. And on the left is a little edit that I made, basically pasted a picture of my face on there, added a couple features, and blended it in all together and changed the skin tone a little bit. Now this is going to be some Photoshop skills. Definitely I don't have enough time to go over that, but if you want to learn Photoshop, do it on your own time. Otherwise, maybe you'll be content with the default textures. Now keep in mind, the default does not have eyebrow models. Um, it has eyebrows that you can paste onto it, but maybe you do or do not like them. I just went ahead and put no eyebrows and used my face scan to import my eyebrows. Uh, so enough of that, let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and go and make human. And if you don't know how to use make human or if you've never used make human before, it is very simple and straightforward. Everything is slider based. Um, you know, very user friendly. You can actually change the height. See the height is pretty much what my height is, 70.85 inches. So that's five foot 10 and almost five foot 11. Um, you can do the age muscle weight and it's very again a slider based you can even do custom measurements which actually went and measured everything because I have no life but enough of that you can actually yeah arms legs teeth I recommend putting a teeth model because as you're gonna see we're going to attempt to animate the mouth and the inside the mouth you don't really have a mouth inside I guess so we're going to go ahead and put a teeth model in, and that's what ended up making my poly count go over the 20K threshold. So I came up with a method to decrease the poly count of it. Hair, um, I recommend putting hair because texturing over that ain't going to be fun. Um, there aren't that many hairstyles, but, you know, so what? You'll end up finding something that, what that I have. I think this is what, yep, this is what I had right here eyes make sure you use the low poly eyes else you might have to um you know exchange some more polygons in the future to get those high poly eyes and keep them and don't do no eyes come on out look i mean there it's, it's an empty void in there so make sure you put some eyes on your model clothes now uh you may want to watch what clothes you put because for example if i gave myself the um the short sleeved shirt it would make this go all crazy and I'm not sure how it goes whenever you actually start posing it but um, it's nothing I would recommend so let's go ahead and just keep myself with the long sleeve shirt since it seems to be more friendly with that um, another note that you're going to want to make is whenever you're modeling it is to pick a low poly topology uh, what the topology is is it's just a preset um, I would assume just a polygon count because that's really all it changes changes maybe the uh, smoothness you know the level of detail in certain areas but um, my personal preference is going to be the male 1591 topology um, the none using none is way too detailed that's way too many polys not good um, using the proxy uh, that definitely puts you at a very low poly count but what I don't like is, especially if you're using a VR headset, is the fingers are all joined together, which makes you look like if it wasn't for the detailed shirt and clothing like we'll, like I'll get to later, you look like you're probably in like a PS2 game like GTA 3 or something. Well, let's go ahead and stick to this male 1591. I, I tend to like the level of detail in it. it tends to be enough. Um, tongue, I didn't put a tongue. Eyelashes, I put eyelashes. Um, of course, they're optional, depending on your level of eyelash detail or how much detail that you want. But whenever you have your model made, now a little neat thing is you can go and put yourself as a background, or in this case, a foreground. Uh, let's go ahead and, let's see, background, front, Let's see. Okay. I was actually able to work on the face by using my face. And this can just click toggle on and off by clicking this little thing right here. And just to get the contours right, I even had a side profile view for those side contours of my face and jawline and similar aspects of it. But once you have your model created and there are multiple clothes that you can do and make human. And all the textures are edit editable. 
after the export so if you wanted to change the you know the style of your clothing and such you can do that after and i know that there is a, a resource um depository available for uh make human clothing so if you want a different style of clothing maybe you wanted a business suit or something like this that that's totally doable but for now we're just going to be using this very low detail thing now when you're done uh just something to make it pretty simple whenever you import it in a unity you're going to mesh format fbx and i put feet on ground i make it non-binary and i'm going to put my scale units in decimeter now that is just when you import it it should be flawless you shouldn't have to reorient it you shouldn't have to place it on the ground it should be all good all ready to go and actually the height will match up in vr chat which is pretty neat so if you want yourself to scale and not a nine inch echidna that is perfect so with this being done let's go ahead and select the directory that we're going to do put it in um i already have a project open in unity so i'm going to go ahead and just save it right there all right the mesh has been exported good so let's go ahead and close out that and unity and with that being said, we're pretty much out of time for the first video. If you have any questions so far, feel free to leave a comment or inbox me if people still do YouTube inboxing or uh, Twitter message me as shown on the screen. Um, there's probably a card hanging around as well or uh, end screen showing on how to get to the next part of the video, which is already uploaded. I'll upload them at the same time. But once again, if you had any questions, ask me. I'll do my best to answer it. I hope you've enjoyed it so far, and I hope you're excited for part two, because here it comes, if you choose to watch it.